assets to whatever BS they want to, you're going to have another banking collapse all over again. You have to do this in order to fix the banking system. Okay? And again, it's either bank owner's capital coming in or the bank can sell bonds, right? So the bank is essentially borrowing money from investors. It's paying back interest on that. That's perfectly fine. That's fine too. All right, so this is what the balance sheet should look like. We gave Amy uh, initially an $8,100 HELOC, but the real estate market has fallen, so now it's only valued at six over here on the asset side. And so then what does, does the bank do to make up the other 2,100? Owner's capital infusion needs to come in here on the other side, okay? And then that's your 2,100 in cash, bank owner cash right there. That balances, that's correct, and that's healthy but that's not what the banking industry does. This is good banking. There are only a relative handful of banks in the United States doing business like this. Most are small, privately held, rural banks. You know, that are some guy who's in his 60s, 70s, or 80s, who has a brain in his head, who's running his bank properly, who doesn't make bad loans, and when he does, there's always dollar for dollar, more than enough bank capital coming in on the other side so that if there is a default, nobody's at risk. The money is always there. There are only, there are only 300 and some odd banks with a perfect Texas ratio score, which is basically what that means. Not only that, but the FDIC and the bank inspectors come into those little banks that are doing business properly and they write them up and they browbeat them. Why, what do they write them up and browbeat them for? For having too much cash and not making enough loans. In other words, you, we insist, we are going to attempt to force you to do what's basically accounting fraud. And furthermore, we are going to punish you and browbeat you out of business if you refuse to give loans to people who you know have a massive risk of defaulting. Welcome, welcome to the world. Welcome to the United States of America. And let's be completely bold and upfront about this. A lot of all of that is driven on race lines, okay? You have to give somebody a loan if they walk in the door and they are not white. And if you don't give them a loan, then we're gonna write you up and you're, one of, you're a dirty fat cat, blah, blah, blah. I, ha I had a banker acquaintance, this is a true story. Guy walked in the bank, wanted to get a loan to buy a used vehicle, okay? Walked in, sat down in this gentleman's office who was the president of the bank, and it was a small rural bank, and he, the, the guy is sitting there. I would almost called him a kid, but he wasn't a kid because he was probably in his late 30s. And he's making the pitch to the banker why the banker should give him this loan to get this used vehicle. The guy is sitting there across from the banker, and he's wearing a T-shirt, and the t-shirt says, and I quote, what are you looking at, dick face? Just stop and think about that. What, what kind of a man would buy a t-shirt like that? What kind of a man would leave the house wearing a t-shirt like that? What kind of a man would walk into a banker's office asking for a loan wearing a t-shirt like that? And in this civilization, the banker is punished because he will not give the loan to the guy wearing the t-shirt saying, what are you looking at, dickface? Are, are, are you wondering why our entire civilization is going to collapse? That's it right there. That's it right there in a nutshell. So the way this balance sheet should look is, or excuse me, I just showed you what it should look like. This is the reality. This is the disgusting reality. They leave Amy's HELOC on their asset side at 8100 valued it at full price, even though the real estate market has collapsed. It's only worth 6000 this balance sheet does not balance. In fact, this is a crime. This is accounting fraud. 
Failure to mark Amy's HELOC to the market is accounting fraud, but this is legalized. It's not just legalized, it is encouraged, it is mandated, it is forced by the government. They've been, these banks have been forced into this. And now, you know, they're just going along with it happily. And there's only a handful of guys who still insist upon doing business correctly. This, this will never work. You can't have a banking system survive like this. If Amy defaults on her HELOC and the bank owners cannot come up with the 2100 to cover the difference, where will the 2100 come from? It's going to come from the depositors. And you say, well, no, Ann, that's not right. There's FDIC insurance. What do you think FDIC is? It's a tax on every one of you. Because if, if banks fail and the FDIC doesn't have the money to, to pay out on this, and if there's a big enough collapse, how's that money going to come into the FDIC? The Fed's going to print it and give it to them, which is doing what? Debasing the currency, which means it's a tax on every one of you. So the depositors will pay for it one way or another, be it directly by having their, their accounts uh, swept, which will eventually happen at the very end stages of all of this. And in the interim, it'll just be via government bailout, government bailout, government bailout, which is just the Federal Reserve printing money, which is just debasing the US dollar, which is a tax on you. Okay, so Amy takes her $8,100 HELOC and let's say, just for example, she decides to put on a deck, okay? And Lou is the deck guy. So she puts on a deck, Lou comes in and deposits the 8100, and now here's 810 in cash in Lou's account. And the bank, therefore, has $7,290 that it can loan out. Now it's gonna get really hairy and disgusting because what does the bank do? It opens a credit card account for Michelle, and Michelle takes the 7290 bucks on her credit card and buys a luxury vacation. Okay, now before, with Amy's HELOC, we've got a lien on the house, right? At least there's, there's a piece of physical property that can be recaptured if, if she defaults. Same with Belinda. Belinda's got this car. Okay, you can repo the car. What about Michelle's luxury vacation on her credit card? What's the lien on there? Nothing, because the, the luxury vacation is experiential. It's not physical. This is, a, this is an unsecured, unbacked loan. It is basically a signature loan to Michelle, unbacked. This is what the entire economy is basically running on right now. This is how people are buying food. This is how people are filling up their gas tanks. And you're going to see a chart of that here in a second. Michelle's vacation on her credit card is totally unsecured. It's a promise by Michelle to pay back the loan with her future earnings. Again, time being money. Michelle is just saying over the next two, three, four, five years, I will pay you back out of my capacity to labor and produce over the next X number of years. Since the money to pay back Michelle's loan does not exist, right? It doesn't exist yet because she hasn't done the work to generate the money. This constitutes naked short selling the currency that the loan was made in, which in this case is US dollars. Another word for this is counterfeiting. That's what all of this is. All of this unsecured lending, all of these unsecured credit cards, all of this debt is shorting the currency. It's like, I mean, it's 10 times. It's orders of magnitude. It's hundreds of times, thousands of times. Anything that anybody could do and it has to stop. 
it has to stop. The bank can issue the credit card to Michelle if it wants to, if it thinks that she's a, 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 good, a good risk. But what the bank has to do is it has to post the $7,290 on the other side to fully back it. If they don't post that and if they don't back it, they are counterfeiting U.S. dollars. They're shorting the currency, naked shorting the currency. So, how do we finish this off? Okay, Michelle goes on her cruise. The cruise line deposits the 7290 and then there's the 7290 in cash on the other side. And that's your balance sheet. That's the completed balance sheet. Okay, now we're going to do some math off of this here. The $10 trillion question is this. What happens if Crazy Eddie and Lou, Crazy Eddie and Lou, walk into the bank to withdraw their balances. Okay, let's think this through. If you look on your balance sheet, Crazy Eddie's balance is nine grand, right? Does everybody see that? Crazy Eddie, he has nine grand. Lou has 8,100. So the total of that is 17,100. Does the bank have 17,100 if Crazy Eddie and Lou walk in the door? No, they don't. How much cash does the bank have? Again, look at your balance sheet. Start at the top on the asset side. Owner's cash sitting in the bank is 1,000. That's the reserve requirement, remember? Crazy Eddie's cash per the reserve requirement on hand is 900. Lou's cash per the reserve requirement on hand is 8,100. And then if you remember the cruise line, we stopped with the cruise line, so we didn't do a reserve requirement. We had to end it somewhere, so that's the end, was 7290 If you total that up, look what it comes out to. It's the original ten grand, right? That's all they have. But Crazy Eddie and Lou, they've got, between them, 17-1 on deposit. What happens? What is going to happen if Crazy Eddie and Lou walk in and say, give me my money? Where are they going to get the shortfall of 7100 Well, they could sell Belinda's car loan into the secondary market. That would be possible, so they could do it that way. Um, could, they, could they sell Amy's HELOC? No. Why can't they sell Amy's HELOC? Because it's underwater. It's 20, it, it would be a $2,100 loss if they try to sell that HELOC into the secondary market. They're only going to get 6000 for it because that's all it's worth in the market if you execute on it today. But they've got it booked at 8100 so not only can they not sell Amy's HELOC, they, they would be $2,100 even worse off if they did because they'd have to recognize that on their balance sheet if they moved it, you see? So they can't touch Amy's HELOC. They can't sell that. And then what? Are you going to sell Michelle's loan? Are you going to sell Michelle's credit card into the secondary market? Yeah, good luck with that. Completely non-collateralized. There's nothing against it. Are you think you're going to get $7,290 from Michelle's credit? Uh, no, 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 no. So really the only thing that is maybe even possible is Belinda's car loan. Now, what if I told you that the 2008 TARP bill set all reserve requirements in the United States at zero? We've been using a 10% reserve requirement. The 2008 TARP bill lowered all reserve requirements to zero in the name of what? In the name of boosting liquidity and stimulus. Oh, we got to get these banks more liquid. We got to get them, you know, issuing these loans to stimulate the economy. Boys and girls, to say it's a house of cards, a house of cards is like a steel cage compared to the United States banking system. The reserve requirements are minuscule, or I shouldn't even say the reserve requirements, just the reserves being held are minuscule. If Crazy Eddie and Lou demand their cash, this will constitute a bank run, and the money will come from the depositors. Again, one way or the other, it's coming from the depositors. Either it's going to come out of their, their sacrosanct segregated deposit accounts, 
or it's going to come from the depositors and everyone else in the form of government bailouts, which has already happened and happening and continues to happen. And the Fed has said is it, that it will go on ad infinitum, Q-eternity. Okay, he's just going to keep buying and buying and buying treasury paper, which is going to, again, be funneled back into the banks. Okay? Well, you say, well, what about FDIC insurance? Seriously? What, what about FDIC insurance, huh? Well, let's see. U.S. total bank deposits today are somewhere between 8 and 10 trillion dollars. Trillion. Between 8 and 10 trillion. How much cash on hand do you think the FDIC has? Well, let's think. 8 to 10 trillion in deposits, and the FDIC has those plaques on every, every teller station, every drive-up uh, little suction tube station. There's that plaque that says all deposits up to $250,000 backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. If we've got between 8 and 10 trillion in deposits, how much do you think that the FDIC has on hand? Try 11 billion. Between 8 and 10 trillion in deposits, 11 billion in FDIC assets as of the latest numbers. And realize that a couple of years ago, the FDIC was actually in the hole. They had less than zero. What they had to do in 2000, and I believe it was 2009, is they had to collect three years worth of premiums in advance because they were completely insolvent and in the hole. And in order to get themselves to the point where they had any money at all, they had to collect three years of premiums from the banks in advance. And even with that, right now, they're sitting with 11 billion. Good luck with that. So if we think about this, what if 25% of the banking capacity in the United States fails? OK, we're looking at billions of dollars, billions of dollars excuse me, trillions of dollars. See, I, even I get confused with these numbers. You're looking at trillions of dollars and you've got 11 billion to cover it. Okay, so what, what would happen? How would they come up with the money? Bernanke would print. And by print, understand, again, we're not talking about printing with printing presses. We're talking about the Federal Reserve opening up their computer spreadsheet and just typing in one, zero, 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 zero. Enter. Trillion bucks. There you go. Buy U.S. bonds. And then it goes to the banks. That's what we're talking about here. And every time they do that, it debases the currency and it causes inflation, which is why when you go to the store, the last time I went to the store, just me, just little old me, 150 bucks buying groceries. Wow. 150 bucks for just a single person buying a few groceries. Why do you think this is happening? Because our currency is being massively, monstrously, willfully, consciously debased and destroyed. The Obama regime has so far debased the currency by, what, six trillion dollars? Six trillion? Yeah. In a 15 and a half trillion dollar GDP kind of an economy, you've, de you've debased by the currency by flirting with half the GDP. You think there's no consequences for this? You think this can just go on and on and on and on? No. In fact, the damage is so profound and so far along that critical mass has been reached and we can't walk it back. There's nothing that can be done now to walk this back. When the banking system collapses, you will pay for it one way or another. The Federal Reserve will print their way out of it, thus debasing the currency, thus causing hyperinflation, thus robbing buying power from every person holding U.S. dollars. And there will be hell to pay. Moral. Moving to a sound bank is not a complete solution. You will still be exposed to hyperinflation risk if holding wealth denominated in U.S. dollars. So you can't just say, well, I'm going to find one of those really good little rural banks with the really awesome bank president who understands all this. It'll, it'll stave you off, but that doesn't shield you from inflation at all. Inflation is a macro-systemic dynamic. 
where your money is sitting in whose bank isn't going to protect you against that. Uh, hyperinflation is, a, is an equal opportunity destroyer. It will destroy everybody equally in proportion to the number of dollars that they hold. Attempt to force you to do what's basically accounting fraud. And furthermore, we are going to punish you and browbeat you out of business if you refuse to give loans to people who you know have a massive risk of defaulting. Welcome, welcome to the world. Welcome to the United States of America. And let's be completely bold and upfront about this. A lot of all of that is driven on race lines, okay? You have to give somebody a loan if they walk in the door and they are not white. And if you don't give them a loan, then we're going to write you up and you're, one of, you're a dirty fat cat, blah, blah, blah. I, ha I had a banker acquaintance. This is a true story. Guy walked in the bank, wanted to get a loan to buy a used vehicle. Okay, Walked in, sat down in this gentleman's office who was the president of the bank, and it was a small rural bank. And he, the, the guy is sitting there. I would almost called him a kid, but he wasn't a kid because he was probably in his late 30s. And he's making the pitch to the banker why the banker should give him this loan. That's to whatever BS they want to. You're going to have another banking collapse all over again. You have to do this in order to fix the banking system. Okay? And again, it's either bank owner's capital coming in or the bank can sell bonds, right? So the bank is essentially borrowing money from investors. It's paying back interest on that. That's perfectly fine. That's fine too. All right, so this is what the balance sheet should look like. We gave Amy uh, initially an $8,100 HELOC, but the real estate market has fallen, so now it's only valued at six over here on the asset side. And so then what does, does the bank do to make up the other 2,100? Owner's capital infusion needs to come in here on the other side, okay? And then that's your 2,100 in cash, bank owner cash right there. That balances, that's correct, and that's healthy but that's not what the banking industry does. I'm going to get this used vehicle. The guy is sitting there across from the banker and he's wearing a t-shirt and the t-shirt says, and I quote, what are you looking at, dick face? Just stop and think about that. What, what kind of a man would buy a t-shirt like that? What kind of a man would leave the house wearing a t-shirt like that? What kind of a man would walk into a banker's office asking for a loan wearing a t-shirt like that? And in this civilization, the banker is punished because he will not give the loan to the guy wearing the t-shirt saying, what are you looking at, dickface? Are, 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 are you wondering why? our entire civilization is going to collapse, that's it right there. That's it right there in a nutshell. So the way this balance sheet should look is, or excuse me, I just showed you what it should look like. This is the reality. This is the disgusting reality. They, this is good banking. There are only a relative handful of banks in the United States doing business like this. Most are small, privately held rural banks you know, that are some guy who's in his 60s, 70s, or 80s, who has a brain in his head, who's running his bank properly, who doesn't make bad loans, and when he does, there's always dollar for dollar, more than enough bank capital coming in on the other side, so that if there is a default, nobody's at risk. The money is always there. There are only, there are only 300 and some odd banks with a perfect Texas ratio score, which is basically what that means. Not only that, but the FDIC and the bank inspectors come into those little banks that are doing business properly, and they write them up and they browbeat them. Why, what do they write them up and browbeat them for? For having too much cash and not making enough loans. In other words, you, we insist we are going to leave Amy's HELOC on their asset side at 8100 valued it at full price even though the real estate market has collapsed it's only worth 6000 
This balance sheet does not balance. In fact, this is a crime. This is accounting fraud. Failure to mark Amy's HELOC to the market is accounting fraud, but this is legalized. It's not just legalized. It is encouraged. It is mandated. It is forced by the government. They've been these banks have been forced into this. And now, you know, they're just going along with it happily. And there's only a handful of guys who still insist upon doing business correctly. This, this will never work. You can't have a banking system survive like this. If Amy defaults on her HELOC and the bank owners cannot come up with the 2100 to cover the difference, where will the 2100 come from? It's going to come from the deposit.